I thought I'd talk about these uh, avocados that are always in the background of my videos. And they are growing in containers. You know, I don't have space for like 10 avocado trees. <laughs> but yeah, like, uh, you know, they're, they're on various stages. They're all around the same age, the ones behind me. But I do have some younger ones and some older ones that, uh, that have been growing. And they're, they're fruiting, so they do work. But how long they'll work, I don't know. But I, sh I can show you how I do it. So these trees, they all started from uh, at the same point as a liner from Brokaw, but they are they are very different. And you can see they grow differently and they grow at different, different paces. So the most important part about this is the, uh, is the soil. You know, if you get one of those small liners from Brokaw, they're growing in perfect soil, which is just peat moss and perlite. And the whole issue behind that is that there's no, there's nothing organic in there that can rot. So the peat moss can't go bad you know, eventually, but it takes a long time. And uh, that's the main reason why avocados fail, because the soil has too much organic matter in it. And that organic matter will rot, and it will cause your, your roots to get root rot. Because avocados are one of the most oxygen-dependent trees, and uh, they can fill very quickly. So here, let me show you what the soil looks like. Uh, this is Gary's Top Pot from Laguna Hills Nursery. I basically grow everything in something like this, something mineral-based. It does have peat moss, which is what will uh, retain water. But, you know, like I, like I said before in a different video, I like to mix my own because I will change kind of the ratios of the peat moss or the pumice or the sand to match what uh, I'm trying to grow. So, you know, blueberries will have more peat moss and uh, something that needs more aeration. Maybe like a uh, avocado will have more pumice. And I also have been adding different things like DG and mycorrhiza just to kind of experiment and see what works better or if it works better at all. When you get a new tree like a liner that's in one of those Brokaw liners, it looks like this, you know, smaller typically. This is a Jan Boyce and it's grafted onto a Zutano seedling as the rootstock. And there is a lot of genetic variation in rootstocks. In some way, it's impossible to really predict. But I did mention in one of my previous videos that you can kind of make decisions based on, on the size of a tree when you're buying it. And you'll look at the rootstock, see how thick the rootstock is. And you can look at the top row to see how vigor vigorous it's growing. And, uh, you know, you want one that has one, well, I like to have one that has one very strong vertical shoot shooting straight up and that'll be your main trunk and um, so they do grow very quickly you know this is in a five gallon container and it looks small but that is going to be quite the tree by June so from here we'll see a, a one-year-old tree this is well one year old from the liner so we'll see one that's gone through one full season okay this is a Charwell in a 15 gallon squat pot you can see it has significant growth. So that one started last year as a liner, smaller than what I have in that pot. It was very, very thin, but it's grown pretty big at this point. You know, to the right is a gem, also in a 15 gallon squat pot and a reed in a 15 gallon squat pot. And they look, they look different. You know, they're going through different phases right now. The gem is looking kind of uh, janky, <laughs> you know, with the yellowing leaves because right now it's flowering heavy and these leaves should all fall off. When the leaves fall off, it gives a chance for the pollinators to get in there more easily and uh, it'll grow more avocados. See, that's a flowering avocado. And that's an open flower buds right there. So that was a Charwell on its second year, and this is one on its third year. So this is actually the first oldest avocado I bought. And you can see it's flowering heavy, leaves are yellowing because it's flowering heavily. And there's gonna be, they all, they all should drop at some point. But it's significantly bigger, it's in a 25 gallon pot. 
AirPod, which uh, I don't really recommend at this point, but you can see how fast they grow. Shawro is one of the slower growing avocados too. It's the buds, leaves. They go through a period of defoliation at, after this, after the leaf cycle. So that was Charwell, and here's another avocado. Same year, uh, this is Surprise in a 20 gallon grow bag. Going through the same thing, heavy flowering and uh, leaf cycling, new growth coming out. I haven't seen much pollination, but I haven't really looked too hard. Maybe. And here's uh, Pinkerton, a significantly different growth pattern. I bought it because it had a fat trunk, but it's been growing sideways, basically. And uh, this, this Pinkerton flowers early, and it has, has quite a bit of fruit that's set on it. So I'm hoping the side branches will stop growing after this. And we can get some uh, more vertical growth. I'm hoping to try a Pinkerton avocado as well. Same pattern too. Yellowing leaves, lots of flowers. I think he's going to be completely naked like last year. And here's a year two Don Gilobly. I have some fruit set here as well. I don't know if you can see that. There's an avocado. So it's set up quite a bit of fruit. And then uh, the weather got warmer. And it flowered again. This is a very vigorous grower. It's about, it's about six feet from the bottom of the pot. Holding about, I don't know, 10 pieces of fruit. And this is also a year three tree, but this is, this is a steward. And this steward is massive. I had to top it because we had a storm last year, but he was like 10 feet tall. And last year I had about 20 fruit that held, but they're very small and they turned out to be cukes, which are seedless, uh, seedless avocados, kind of like a failed pollination, but they were definitely edible and very good. And this is another reed. One of my first reeds. And this is a special tree. This is on clonal rootstock. It's on Duke 7. So there's a process for avocados where they'll graft on, they'll, they'll grow the seed, and then they'll graft the rootstock tree, and then they'll keep it in the darkness and they'll root out that rootstock and, uh, for a year or so. And then after that's all grown out, they'll graft it again onto the variety that you're actually going to eat. And this one was Duke 7 with uh, reed, reed on top. So this is not doing as well as the other trees for one specific reason, and that's because I bare rooted it. So this is why I know that avocados don't tolerate bare rooting very well. I was very careful in what I did, but these are just not something you want to do. That's why I bought the other reed just to kind of test out the growth how different it would be and it's kind of caught up you know they're they're pretty similar in how they they're pretty similar in their current size so like you know there's benefits to the rootstock but it's more important just to get a healthy tree from the beginning all right so something we'll talk about is genetic variation so this is a clonal rootstock, right? This is the reed on Duke 7. And I'll just put my hand here to reference how big the trunk is. It's about an inch, not too, not nothing too special. And uh, keep in mind, these are all the same age trees, right? And this, this is a Stewart. This trunk is like four times bigger. And it's the same age tree. See that? This thing is massive. And you compare that to the Pinkerton, which is about twice as big as the reed. And then the rest are basically the same, you know. This is a well, this is bigger. This is definitely bigger. The surprise is definitely bigger. 
that's actually quite a bit bigger than I thought it would be. And here's the the other char wheel. So genetic variation is very real, and uh, graph compatibility is very real too, in some way I guess, because you know there's been some uh, I've seen some char wheels on clonal rootstock that just wouldn't grow very big, and that has to be a compatibility issue. But things seem to work out well with Brokaw's Zutanos, which is what most of these trees are on. And you know, like, when you're picking out a small tree, or even a bigger tree, you want to compare to see, pick the ones that have more massive growth. Because <laughs> this one was, this Stuart was way different, way bigger than uh, any other tree that I had bought. And that's why I bought it, you know, it was just enormous. So in terms of fertilization, you know, I started them off with Osmico Plus and a little bit of uh, organic fertilizer. It doesn't have to be stunned earth. And it's basically Gary's protocol at Laguna Hills. It's what we follow. And, you know, I don't think too much about it. I just, just dump it on there. You know, for the organics, I like to add them in the beginning of the spring. But, you know, I don't really worry too much about it. Same with uh, Osmico. It only lasts about five or six months. So you want to give it plus a year or so. I do also add Jack's liquid fertilizer, 25, 515, but you don't want to give it to them when it's flowering and fruiting because then they usually will abort their fruit and then grow more leaves. That's what happened to my Pinkerton last year. Everything dropped. <laughs> All the fruit did not hold. It just grew more sideways. That's the fertilizing protocol. Nothing too crazy. In terms of irrigation, I just water them every day. You know, if you don't have anything that's going to rot, your your soil or your trees you don't have anything organic in there no wood you know no wood chips no bark then there's nothing that's going to cause your roots to rot so sometimes in the summer i'll water them two to three times just because i'm bored i think this guy is going to need like at least two waterings a day in the summer because it's getting a little big i don't have the strength to up pot this <laughs> so I don't know what I'm going to do. We'll see how it goes. So when it comes to irrigation, you don't want to let the plants dry out. So this is a gem. This was actually my most vigorous growing gem last year. But I had it in a five gallon and uh, I let it dry out because my soil was too high. And I wasn't getting it wet enough. It's in a 15 gallon now. So let's take a look at that. And this is also a gem bought at the same time, less vigorous initially, but it is much, it's growing much bigger now. And this one did not dry out. You can see it's bigger. I mean, once they do dry out, they suffer because uh, there's a lot of root damage. And you also want to keep these, this, this, this pot is also in the sun directly like this. So I think that might have cooked some roots too. And that's definitely not going to help. <laughs> if you've seen the way I stake, I stake them to the side loosely. So if there's a strong wind, it won't blow over, but it still has room to sway. So the trunks will develop. Usually I put two stakes, but yeah, I've been able to get this one done with one. Now also last year, when it comes to sun protection, I didn't shade these at all. We didn't get, we didn't break 100. We got to about 98. That was about as hot as we got. But, you know, I had no, I had no sunburn or any type of damage. See all these trunks, these branches are very green. Even, even though this one did dry out. You know, this is just lignified. It's not, not uh, any sun damage. So you don't have to baby them too much as long as they have the right soil they can keep themselves hydrated <laughs> so they don't need to they don't need to be uh they don't need to be shaded i didn't spray anything on them either so yeah but they're, they're easy 
and they grow very quickly under the right conditions. I mentioned earlier, I have these grow bags and I would not grow them again in grow bags. And it's just for one specific reason is because, you know, they're too heavy to move. <laughs> like I can put a pot on a dolly, but I can't, I can't really do that with a big grow bag, you know? They also dry out a little bit faster, well, quite a bit faster than in a plastic pot. And uh, you know, that's not much of a concern. Like aeration is not a concern when you have a mineral-based soil. So you don't have to worry about oxygen issues. But they do stay cooler. So that could be good, good thing and a bad thing. So air pots maintain the temperature, like the ambient temperature outside. So, you know, if it's 30 degrees outside, it's 30 degrees inside the roots too. So there's, there's, there is a benefit to having plastic in that situation because uh, that plastic is going to stay warmer. So your roots are going to be warmer. But it's also the same issue for the summertime is uh, that pot's going to get hotter. <laughs> so you need to worry, you need to think about how to keep that, that pot cooler or else it's going to cook your roots. So, I mean, if, you're, if it's not going to move anywhere, you might want to consider an airbag or an air pot. And if you have like a drip system on there, you don't have to worry about it drying out either. So that's also beneficial. But just some things to think about, you know, for me that I like, I have to move stuff around. I definitely like to keep them into plastic pots. And that's, that's pretty much it. You know, growing avocados has been pretty easy for me. I just, uh, the proper soil and then uh, make sure they're fertilized and then you make sure you water them. Uh, make sure they don't go dry. And that's pretty much it. You know, they, some of them grow faster than the others, but they all seem to get there. You know, like, I don't see just bathing them. I just water them <laughs> after everything's set up. You know, once they get, fill up a pot, you pot them up. You just keep moving along unless you put them in the ground. That's pretty much it, guys. I mean, you should just totally try it. If you've ever had problems growing, growing avocados, then definitely get some top pot. Or get some, or just make some uh, mineral-based soil, or just put it in the dirt in your yard. Just make sure there's no, you know, amend the soil with any compost or anything like that. If you want to add something, I would suggest gypsum. That helps the water soak into the clay better. That's it, guys. Good luck. Rules go wild. That's what they call me. I'm the man with a plan, growing naturally from the dirt to the table. It's a beautiful sight. Yeah, it grows gone wild. We're living it right.